Have you been going through a tough time? I heard a teacher one time who asked, what's worse, physical pain, mental pain, or emotional pain? And she said the answer is whichever one you're currently going through. And that's what we're going to talk about on this episode of Wonderful Life, how to get through those tough times. I'm Mary Dittman. I'm an award-winning business professor on the collegiate level and the creator of College on Fleek and Wonderful Life. Wonderful Life is my way of describing what it feels like when you've made peace with being single. And I know that there are a lot of women out there who just love being single and they don't want a relationship, but I've never felt that way. I've always wanted to be married and have a family, but I'm well over 40 and that hasn't happened for me. And that's really been a source of sadness in my life because for me, the definition of a fulfilled life includes being a wife and a mother. And for many years, I felt like I just didn't know if I could ever really truly be happy if I stayed single. I realized I needed to figure out how to be happy with being single because the singleness did not seem to be changing. And that's what wonderful life is. It's not about being happy because you're single. It's about being happy while you're single and creating a fulfilling life, even if you don't have that marriage and family that you want. Now, I wrote a blog on the subject that we're gonna talk about today, and you can see that blog at wonderfullife.com. Now, in the blog, I talk about recently being sick and Actually, I wrote that part of the blog after I had been sick uh, a couple years ago, actually. And I think I was down with the flu for a weekend and it was one of those things where I could feel it creeping up on me and I knew I was getting sick, so I was able to go to the store and like get my supplies. And I've heard it said, don't waste a crisis. For me, I used that weekend sick because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do anything. I used that time to like watch um, a set of de teaching DVDs that I have from uh, one of my favorite spiritual teachers and I made sure I took really good care of myself. I got a lot of sleep and I ate really well and I just used it as a time of physical and spiritual healing and nourishment. And that was really smart because over the last few weeks, as I'm filming right now, I caught a whatever nasty head cold is going around and it wasn't the flu, but I'll tell you what, it knocked me out. And it really hit me at a time when I was already feeling pretty tired and kind of burned out. And so I spent, instead of spending that time like reading or watching like more teaching DVDs or something like that, I'm gonna be honest with you, mama made some bad decisions. I got hopped up on sugar, started doing some stuff. So I didn't, I did waste that crisis. So I used it as an opportunity to just sort of soothe myself with carbs and sugar and um, I'm not going to say that I wasn't totally productive when I was sick because I actually did accomplish some things. One, I finished a Netflix series that I had been plotting through and then I started and finished two more Netflix series. So I, I did accomplish something. But the reason that being sick really aggravates me, I mean, of course, no one likes to be sick. So not only do you feel crummy physically, but I'm a very driven production oriented person. I mean, I like to get things done and check off my list and I work full time. I'm a college professor, but I also am investing a lot of time and energy into wonderful life, trying to help other women who might be struggling with the things that I've struggled with. I also spend time working on college on fleek, which is my outreach to college students. So I'm laying on the couch making bad decisions and watching Netflix and there's a bunch of stuff not getting done. And that aggravates me. 
Now, I'm not saying that when you're sick, you shouldn't rest, of course. In fact, you need to rest when you're sick. You need to sleep as much as you can. Your body needs that rest to heal. And you need to drink plenty of fluids. Of course, if you're ill, you may need to check in with your doctor. Um, I knew I just had a head cold, so I wasn't gonna check in with my doctor. I didn't have a fever. Where I'm going with this today is not so much about what to do when you're sick. It's really about how to approach times in our life when things aren't going how we want them to go, meaning maybe they've really slowed down or, or you're not seeing any forward progress. Personally, the holidays for me can be a real drag and I'm gonna be sharing some holiday material with you as we get closer to the holidays, but Things really slow down. I'm a teacher, so I have like five weeks off during the holidays, which is great. But of course, many times my friends who have children and spouses, you know, they're really busy and my family doesn't live in the area where I am. So things really slow down at the holidays. And sometimes that can be a real source of loneliness. Same thing in the summertime. For you, it could be something seasonal. Maybe things slow down for you with your work at certain points of the year. Maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you struggle at the holidays because it seems like people kind of scatter and do their own thing. And if you don't really have a family, then you kind of get left out. I like to use slow times as an opportunity to really make forward progress. An example I could use is one of my favorite times to go into my office at the university and really get some work done is on Saturday because nobody is there. And I'll get in my office and I'll just be able to really get things done and crank out some product because nobody is there to interrupt me. And it's kind of the same thing, you know, like if you're an entrepreneur or you're in business, things really slow down at the holidays depending on your profession. I mean, obviously, if you work in retail or healthcare, maybe things really don't slow down. In fact, they pick up. But maybe you find professionally that things really slow down during the holidays because it's hard to get decisions made because everyone's traveling and people just are kind of in that mindset. But if you're a single person, and especially if you're like me and you don't have children, while everybody else is doing what whatever it is vacation traveling if it's summertime you know they're headed to the beach or they're entertaining their kids because they're out of school certainly during the holidays you know people are distracted with festivities but you could actually use that time to move ahead with whatever it is maybe you really would like a promotion hey, the holidays when everybody else is kind of like not really focused could be a good time for you to map out a strategy and start cranking out some work. Maybe you're gonna go back to school. If you're taking some online classes, you could really get through some online classes when things are slow. I'm the kind of person that I, I like to get things done. I like to be busy. Now, I used to like to be so busy that I couldn't even hardly breathe. I don't like that kind of busy anymore. I do like to have a structure and a routine, but when, you're, when you don't have that structure or that routine, that can be an opportunity to really plow ahead and get some things accomplished in your life. Maybe it's organizing your closets. Maybe it's starting a meditation practice. Maybe it's checking out a yoga class or a fitness class at your gym. Speaking about seasons, we, we all go through seasons. And I don't really like the saying, well, everything happens for a reason because I don't believe that's true. But I do believe that God can use anything and we can get something good out of anything that happens if we're willing to do that. And I remember one of my girlfriends a few years ago, her mom passed away and she was really grieving the loss of her mom and and she said to me at work one day she said i just feel like i'm not doing a great job teaching and i'm not 
able to get as much done outside of the classroom as I normally do. And I said, well, yeah, you're grieving. I mean, you don't, you just don't have the energy. And if you're struggling with grief or depression, maybe you've lost someone, um, maybe someone you love has died or you lost a relationship or even, you know, your kids are growing up and, and becoming more independent. That can bring a sense of grief too because they don't need you like they used to. And when you're in a time like that, your mental and emotional energy and frequently your physical energy is just so focused on getting you through that time and you're probably not gonna function at 100%. And frankly, what I said to my friend, she said, I just feel like I'm really only at 50% right now. I said, yeah, but you know what? Your 50% is pretty close to other people's 100%. And your students cannot, your students don't know that you're at 50% because this is a brand new class. So they just think that however you, you are with them right now is how you would normally be. They're not comparing, well, she was like this two weeks ago and now she's different. And sometimes you just have to cut yourself some slack and say, you know what? I just need to conserve my energy and get through this time. I go through seasons where when I have a little bit of downtime, I'm super productive and I get stuff done. And then I go through seasons where I just need to rest. It's not always healthy to get things done and throw yourself into something to avoid dealing with something that you're going through. I've watched people who have been through loss avoid dealing with it and, and they do that by distracting themselves and getting busy and doing things and yes it can be good to stay busy but at some point you're going to have to deal with your grief and if you don't deal with it it's going to linger and it will crop up it could be years down the road and it may take a form other than what you expected but anything that we don't deal with doesn't just evaporate it, it sits inside of us and the time will come when we have to deal with something. And maybe you're in a really great season. If you're, maybe you just started dating someone and it's really exciting and happy. Well, yeah, enjoy that. Enjoy it, really get into it because here's the thing, if the relationship doesn't work out, this is the best it's gonna be and enjoy it. But if the relationship moves forward and let's say you're together for the rest of your lives, it's never gonna be like it is now, like the kind of fun, crazy, you're having all these emotions. So enjoy that. Any season you're in, even though you don't wanna stay there, can be a season that can benefit you. And that's what I've learned to do when I'm in a difficult season. I can use that time to help myself in some way. Going back to when I was sick recently and I spent so much time on the couch watching Netflix and, and eating bad food. And the thing that I regret about that is that then when I started feeling better, I was feeling all pudgy and I had to get my eating back on track and I had let some things slide because all I wanted to do was watch Netflix. And how you go through a season is really up to you. That's something that you have to determine what's the best way for you to handle something. For me, as we approach the holidays at the time that I'm filming this, we're a few weeks away from Thanksgiving, but you know, it's going to be here soon. And I, I really see a significant slowdown because well, November is crazy with final exams, but once December hits, it's really slow because obviously I'm not teaching. And then my family doesn't live here, so things can really slow down for me. But, and I used to really dread that because I was afraid that that would mean I would feel lonely or I wouldn't really have anything to do. And for me, the holidays are a difficult time because it's a constant reminder of what I don't have. You know, every ad on television or in the magazines is about like, he bought you a diamond ring, he bought you a new car, you know, photos of these beautiful, happy families. And it's, everything is just a reminder that I don't have that. And so the holidays for me can be very painful. 
But what I've learned to do is use that time of the holidays that is slow to really get some forward movement on something. It could be something like starting a new exercise plan. You should talk to your doctor if you're gonna start anything new though. Or in my case, it can be making forward progress, developing some new programs for Wonderful Life or new content for College on Fleek. Sometimes I use it as an opportunity to get in there and get those closets cleaned out. So whatever season you're in, make it count and really get what you can get out of it. And if you need to slow down and just take a breath or even grieve a loss, then do that. If, it, if you're in a season of joy, then yeah, enjoy it and have fun with it. And if you're just kind of in a slow season, maybe with some doldrums, maybe use that extra time to invest in something that when you're out of that season, you'll have something to show for that quiet time. Now, I'd like to hear from you. What season are you in? And post that in the comments because Wonderful Life is a dialogue, not a monologue. And we want to hear from you. We want to know what sorts of things do you want to hear more about and what do you need to help you on your wonderful journey. You can always connect with us at wonderfullife.com and join us next week because we're going to determine if we really are as giving as we sometimes think we are. So that's next week right here on Wonderful Life.